sits on the table in front. We, we, uh, we have a bigger version. Uh, thank you for all the, the work that uh, went into that. And, uh, I want to especially thank uh, uh, Lucas because uh, I was not climbing up as, as high as he was. Uh, and uh, thankfully, he is uh, uh, braver or dumber than I am. Uh, but he got way up there to, uh, to do some work uh, on, on that particular thing. So. Uh, thank you very much for that. And of course, uh, hopefully you can hear some better this morning. Uh, we have uh, uh, some, some microphones that have been added in, and, and so uh, things are, again, continuing to, to, to come right along. Thank you for all those that are, that are working on that. Uh, Sherry said she tested this out, so uh, hopefully this is, uh, this is good to go. So, all right, so we have a thumbs up from, from Sherry. Uh, we are going to look at uh, the next uh, few lessons, looking at some, some lessons from the life of King Solomon. And with this, uh, you know, today, uh, this idea of, of wisdom, uh, I, when I talk about it, usually I, I say, you know, hey, let's, uh, you know, here's something from, from the world's smartest man. And, uh, you know, we, we have that from the scriptures. We, we just read through, you know, nobody was... Uh, had been given as much uh, you know, wisdom and, and able to, to make these decisions as Solomon. Nobody before, nobody after. Why? Of course, we can put a little asterisk next to that. We have the uh, the man who created wisdom that came to this earth, uh, this man by the name of Jesus. Uh, but when we're talking just man, not man, and God, uh, Solomon fits the bill according to the scriptures. Uh, you know, again, God calling it out. You are going to be the, the wisest ever. Uh, I remember uh, watching uh, the, a movie. If you can uh, forgive me for, for going back to Hollywood just for a minute. But uh, the, uh, the first Avengers movie. Uh, one of those uh, classics from the golden age. And uh, I remember that you know, so Captain America has been in, on ice for 75 years in hibernation. That's a long nap. And uh, so he is uh, awakened, and he's ready to go to work. And so uh, you have this uh, man by the name of, I think his first name is Agent, Agent Colson, that uh, is describing uh, to him uh, the Incredible Hulk uh, when he is uh, a scientist by the name of Bruce Banner. And he says, this guy's a real Stephen Hawking. And Cap looks at him and he's like, huh? Now he'd been asleep for 75 years. He didn't know who Stephen Hawking was. And so, uh, Agent Colson, he's a really smart guy. I uh, propose this morning that uh, they could change that up a little bit. And uh, when we talk about uh, Stephen Hawking and how smart he was, uh, that we could say he was no Solomon, but he was a really smart guy. <coughs> this man was uh, of an incredible intelligence. Even before God blessed him with the wisdom that he blessed him with, the fact that he asked for the wisdom in the first place shows how smart he was when he was talking with God. We look at uh, wise guys. And uh, Dan, I, I just want you to know now, there's a difference in wise guys and wise guys. <coughs> Solomon was one of these wise guys. He was extremely smart. And normally, you know, I think of, of Solomon and you know, I think of this particular part. God is asking him, what do you want me to give you? I mean, this is, again, the creator of the entire universe, all-powerful, all-knowing. Just, it's God. And he's having a conversation with Solomon. He says, tell me what you want. Now, congratulations, you've just become the king. What are you going to do now? And, of course, you know, Disney World wasn't around yet, so he couldn't go there. So something even better, I'm going to ask God for wisdom. God, you have blessed me with the ability to be with the king of your people. And there, there's nobody like your people. I want to know how to do my job the best. And I know you can do that. You can help me. <coughs> can you imagine going in, you started the first day of work. What do you do? You sit there and try to figure out what to do. 
Sometimes it takes just a, a few minutes. Sometimes it's the same thing over and over again, and you get it figured out in a hurry. Other times it takes months, sometimes years, before you figure out exactly what you need to be doing so that you can be the best at your job. Solomon wanted to be able to walk in and know how to do this job better than anybody had ever done that job before. And God said, make it so. Solomon's life was one of uh, great accomplishments. God had plans for him. But of course, you know, we know, we've already read through the book, there were some also uh, not so great accomplishments that Solomon <coughs> accomplished in his life. One of the things, though, that, again, God had plans for him. God told David, uh, after David had asked him, you know, David was like, no, look, I'm, I'm living in this great path. I mean, this, this, this house is awesome. I mean, you can call it a castle if you want. But, you know, this is a great, great place. God, you're in a tent. It's not like we even went to uh, the, the, you know, the Coleman Outlet and bought one of those nice new ones that they've got. We, we made this one ourselves. No quote. Well, According to your instructions, of course. You're in a tent. I'm in a house. Something's wrong with that. Let me build you a house. God told David, his hands had too much blood. But his son Solomon, he would build this house. God had great plans for Solomon. Of course, we know that house was built. His life began with great purpose. I think it had to do with the fact that he was wise in asking for wisdom. Of course, Solomon decided to carry that wisdom on, and he wanted to be wise in the ways of the world. He was looking for something. Pleasure. What can I get in this life to give me the most out of this life? To give me the most pleasure out of this life? And we see, of course, we know he married multiple women, had multiple concubines. And according to 1 Kings 11, first eight verses, this was what helped lead him into idolatry. Leading him away from a conversation <coughs> with God into believing these little images, sometimes the big images, but the totally made up gods were real. After his search for wisdom of the world, we have the conclusion of the whole matter. According to Solomon in his uh, research, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. You may have this is a, the whole duty of man. This, this is man's all. This is everything that, that if, if we focus on this, we'll have pleasure. We'll have a fulfilled life. And here's why we need to do it. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. He was wise enough to know what was coming up. He was wise enough to know that this life is temporary. When we look at this idea of wisdom, and as he was searching for uh, wisdom of the world, what we want to do is look at some of the lessons that we can learn. Again, today, if he focuses on uh, what we know of, as uh, Steve was mentioning, this, this idea of, of wisdom, it is smart to know God's Word. It is even smarter to understand it. It is paramount to our eternal destination. If we want to go to heaven, to not just know and understand, but to do it. We don't know 
if Solomon was smart enough to apply what he knew. In the beginning, yes. So we have them talking with God, worshiping God, following after God. We have them following, following, falling away instead of following God toward the end of his life. Even though he knew the truth, wrote the truth, spoke the truth, did he live the truth? That's a question we'll have to have answered later. What lessons can we learn from the life of Solomon in, again, looking for wisdom? Um, it is wise for the wise to seek wisdom to be wise. Okay, that's not in any scripture. That sounds more like Yogi Berra than uh, Solomon. But smart people keep looking to get smarter. That's what Solomon was trying to push in this search for wisdom. Yes, he was extremely intelligent. He wanted more. That's not a bad thing. To keep filling our mind with wisdom, <coughs> the truth. Solomon asked for wisdom, of course, he was given even more. God was pleased with him. He wanted to know the truth. He wanted to be smart. He wanted to be wise. He wanted to be able to rule properly. God blessed him with that wisdom, but also, again, with power, wealth, prosperity, honor. But we look at the book of Proverbs, which is where we're going to spend most of our, our time this morning. If you want to go ahead and turn over there to, to the book of Proverbs. As he is writing this, of course, his wisdom is coming from God. This inspiration is coming from God. <laughs> this is not just the, the world's smartest man, and I'm going to write some things down that just pop in my head. And then I can get on the uh, New York Times bestseller list, because, well, it, we were still dealing with Old York probably at that time. New York wasn't around. He wasn't just writing it for selling books. This was passing along the wisdom that God had given him. We get the benefit of it. God knew we would also need the wisdom of the Word of God. That word <coughs> used 53 times in the book of Proverbs. We look at, you know, here is why this book is being written. Proverbs 1, uh, the first seven verses. Uh, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction. To perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. To give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and the riddles, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. This book is not just uh, little uh, uh, fortune cookie sayings. You know, they're, they're a little, some of them are just individual verses where they throw around just, you know, different sayings. This is wisdom being imparted to us. And as he says in verse number five, smart people listen to wisdom and they continue to learn. Uh, Bob has mentioned it before in, uh, in class uh, or, or the fact of uh, being here for class. The fact that uh, we don't know everything. Some of us have been going to Bible class for a few years or decades, a long time. And we still don't know everything. But that's why we keep coming back because we're wise. We're still seeking for more and more wisdom. And this book is chock full of wisdom. In Proverbs, we see wisdom personified. We see wisdom described as a, as a woman. In Proverbs chapter 1, as Steve mentioned this earlier, in Proverbs chapter 1, if you look at verse number 20, wisdom cries aloud in the street, in the market, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. 
How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? If you turn to my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. This wisdom is available. This, this book is calling out to us. Read me. Understand me. Live by me. Foolish people, keep this book closed. Wise, seek. We see in Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 13, the person who is wise, the person who has wisdom, is blessed. Now, blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. Again, this is not just, uh, you know, I'm going to sit here and wait for a divine intervention and have this uh, poured into my head. Okay, I tried that all through high school. It doesn't work with algebra. And it doesn't work with the scriptures. All right? If we're going to get wisdom, we got to use our noggin. We have to use our eyes to read. We have to use our ears to hear. We have to get it. It's not just going to be dropped into our head. Solomon said, uh, among all the things that we, we get in this life, again, the things that we, we go after, wisdom needs to be among them. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. If you want to be smart, go get the truth. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. <clears throat> Again, we're not talking about the fact that we may know the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, that, that's wisdom, all right? Uh, the fact that you can name all the numbers and the number of pi, which it's impossible. But anyway, a lot of the numbers that are in the number pi, that, that's wisdom. There, there's the, you know, the, the fact that you can know all of that, that, that's a crazy amount of information. That's great. None of that is going to affect your eternal destination. True wisdom is the Word of God. The thing that matters in this life is where am I going to be in the next life? When my time on this earth runs out, where am I spending eternity? The answer is in the book. You get it. Wisdom begins with proper respect for God. We see Proverbs 9, verse 10. <clears throat> the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The beginning, uh, fear, respect, honor, even being afraid. That's the beginning of wisdom. God holds the future in his hands. You may have sung that before. God holds our future in his hands. He is going to decide where we're going for all eternity. But we get to choose. See, he has given us the directions. If you want to go to heaven, this is what you need to do. If you want to go to hell, this is what you can do. We have the choice. Knowledge is understanding his will. <clears throat> Wisdom is more valuable than the most precious substances on earth. How much better to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. These words are more than anybody's bank account. Uh, all, the, all the gold that uh, is, is hiding there in Fort Knox. And even more precious than things that aren't monetary. The most valuable, precious substance on earth 
his word is more valuable than that. Well, that ranks right on up there with a kiss from my granddaughter on her cheek, on my cheek. A wink of an eye from my wife. Pecan pie, last cream, not on top of it. Precious substances of on earth. Nothing is more valuable than the roadmap to heaven. And yet, there are people willing to give that away for nothing. Again, we've read to the end of the book. We know how all this ends. We're smarter than that, right? We have wisdom. We've got the knowledge. And we, we understand it. And we're willing to do something about it. Wisdom is so valuable that once we get it, we don't need to let it go. Solomon said, buy the truth and do not sell it. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. Would we buy a lie from our doctor? Going to the doctor and going for the visit, and he comes in and says, I can, I can tell you what you want to hear, or I can tell you what you need to hear. <clears throat> Listen, I got some bad news earlier today. I did not save a lot of money on my car insurance. Um, how about tell me what I want to hear? Okay, great. Listen, whatever you're doing, you keep doing it. But look, the fried chicken and pecan pie is working great. Just, just, keep, you know, uh, just keep doing the same thing, and you are going to be fine. I feel great leaving that office. He's telling me I'm doing fine. Everything's wonderful. The fact that my body is ravaged with cancer, or the fact that uh, heart's all clogged up, or the fact that uh, I've got something else that's going on that's, that's going to kill me. That's totally beside the point. I feel really good right now. When we go to see a doctor, I mean, we expect to hear the truth, right? We take the wisdom that we receive from them. Not from WebMD, because that's all, I mean, it's all absolute worst case scenario. But we go see an actual doctor. We take that information, and we apply it, and we use it, and hopefully it's going to help us. What do we want to hear from the scriptures? Solomon says we need to hear the truth. We need to be wise. We need to understand it, and we need to do something about it. Because if not, if we just hear what we want to hear, Everything you do is just fine. We may feel okay for that particular point in time. But our souls will be lost for all eternity. And that short amount of time of feeling good is really, really small when compared to eternity. Solomon and God wants us to be wise. So how do we get that? How do we get wisdom? Well, we, uh, we go to the source, right? James 1 and verse 5, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. God wants us to know the truth. But he wants us to make a choice to want the truth. He has not created robots. We're, we're not, uh, you know, he is not going to force us to be obedient to him. He has given us this information, and it is our choice to decide which way we go. If we want to know, he wants us to know. We see an example of this, Acts chapter 8, as uh, this uh, Ethiopian is uh, reading through the Word of God and uh, doesn't know who he's talking about. This, this prophet Isaiah is talking about, uh, is it himself? Is he talking about somebody else? He wanted to know the truth. Enter Philip, who explains to him who Jesus is. Behind the scenes, because we don't have the word by the word for word conversation, but at some point as he's having this conversation with Jesus, Ethiopian has a, a decision to make. 
in my obedience to this one that he is describing to me as the Son of God? Or do I just say, that's useful information? I'm going to take that with me and, and go and I'll look for more wisdom in the world and, and try to gather as much as I can. Eventually I'll make a decision, but I'm just going to take him and go. The Ethiopian had wisdom. He understood it. It's an eternal decision. He acted on it. When we look at this, again, this idea of wisdom, are you looking for it? Are you seeking wisdom? Because God has given us a way to get that wisdom. It's in his book. We call it a love letter. I love you so much, I'm going to spell it out for you. I want you to live in heaven with me for all eternity. Here's what I've done to open up this path for you. And here is all you have to do. Be obedient to me. Are you seeking for this wisdom? Matthew uh, chapter 7, you see in verse 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If you are looking for the truth, you will find it. God will make sure of that. He has provided that for us. Once we find it, what are we going to do with it? As far as being obedient to Him, of course, it's uh, getting rid of sin. That is being obedient to Him to, to live the kind of life He wants us to live. We must be connected to Him. We must have a relationship with Him, and we cannot have that if we have sin in our life. So again, He has laid out for us this 4,000 year story of what He has done so that we can have forgiveness of sins. Culminating with the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus, on the cross. Learning who He is we believe in Him enough to change our life. Repenting of our previous life, repenting of our sins, and, and then changing our life into His, his wisdom. Do we confess our faith to Him as the Son of God? Do we baptize and have our sins washed away? Acts 1 through 16. It's then that we live our life as a Christian. Revelation 2.10 reminds us that if we remain faithful, we'll receive the crown of life in heaven. Maybe you've, uh, you've done that and have allowed the wisdom of the world to come in. You have uh, understood the wisdom of the world and you have acted on it, which is contrary to God's wisdom. Sin. Again, that is the one thing that can separate us from God. But the good news is that God still wants us to be saved. And he has provided us the wisdom, the words that we need, the instructions we need to be able to get rid of that sin again. It's talking to God. Confessing your sin. Asking Him for forgiveness. Returning your life to match up with His will. Is there anybody here this morning that needs help? Whether it's obeying the gospel for the first time or maybe it's uh, coming back to Him. Coming back to your first love. Maybe it's uh, just uh, the prayers of the church to help get back into the wisdom of God, living the life as a Christian. Whatever your need, we stand ready to help. Even now as we stand and sing. Oh.